actually pretty tricky getting out here. <laughs> hey guys, so welcome to day two and welcome back to Dragon's Den. To start off today, we have um, Claudia Diaz, professor at University of Levin and chief tech scientist at NIM Technologies. She'll be talking about why we need network level privacy. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, do you hear me well? Yep, take it away. Okay, hopefully it works. Okay, so this talk addresses um, why we need uh, network that network um, level privacy. And the short answer is that if you do not have network level privacy, um, the, the network traffic metadata will act as a side channel that undermines the security and privacy of your application. And this has been well documented in the case of cryptocurrencies. Oops, sorry, I'm fighting with the slides. In the case of uh, Bitcoin, for example, which doesn't have uh, protections at the network layer, this has been shown to enable eclipse attacks, for example, that can then be used to mount more serious attacks that uh, do double spending or, or selfish mining, for example. Um, in addition to um, eclipse attacks, Sorry, I'm having trouble with seeing my slides here. Yeah, in addition to eclipse attacks, um, uh, researchers have shown that uh, the, the, um, the timing of, net, of network messages shared in Bitcoin can be used to de-anonymize transactions, linking the transaction to the IP address of the user that generated or clustering transactions as belonging to the same person. So one of the solutions is to, to use Tor in order to, to have some protection against these attacks. But the protection uh, offered by Tor is inadequate uh, because Tor still enables end-to-end -end correlation. This is because Tor doesn't really disturb the traffic patterns. So if uh, an adversary is able to see the client sending the traffic and is able to see the destination where the traffic is going, it is possible to look at the start and the end of this trans um, the, the circuit. It's possible to look at the traffic pattern within the circuit and to correlate the two uh, ends in a way that uh, breaks the, um, the network level uh, privacy. So uh, this is not only affecting uh, Bitcoin, uh, Lightning Network, for example, which has the slightly better privacy properties because the, the um, transactions are conducted between peers and there is not a public record that is persistent and available to everyone. Uh, but in Lightning Network, when two peers don't have a direct uh, channel with each other, they will route their uh, payments through other peers, and the use for that is Sphinx. Um, Sphinx is a is a, um, a, pack, a data packet format for uh, routing private communications, and it enables you to do multi-hop routing uh, while having a linkability of input and output messages. However, because Lightning Network nodes do not uh, do any mixing of the packets they receive and route for others, that means they do not provide anonymity towards global passive adversaries. These are adversaries that can observe the Lightning Network node and that will see one packet coming in and immediately being sent out to the next destination. So it is possible to use the timing of uh, incoming and outgoing packets in order to correlate inputs to outputs and break the anonymity. In addition to that, uh, Lightning has uh, another problem, which is low uh, routing entropy. So this is because it is not a fully connected network. So uh, given a pair of uh, peers that want to conduct a transaction, typically you will not have so many routes between them uh, that have uh, just a few hops. So uh, given that determinism in the route, in the choice of routes, that means that it is relatively easy to determine whether the predecessor is the sender of the transaction and whether the successor is the receiver of the transaction. And this uh, undermines anonymity towards uh, malicious peers. Um, even if we consider more sophisticated systems such as Zcash or Monero that has uh, on-chain protection uh, with more uh, fancy cryptographic protocols, uh, these systems still have the network metadata exposed. And uh, works by, for example, Birjukov and others have shown that timing attacks at the network layer can be used to de-anonymize transactions and to cluster transactions that belong to the same person. Again, as in the, in the previous cases, Tor offers limited protection because it doesn't really protect against uh, adversaries that can see both ends of the connection and are able to correlate um, 
inputs to outputs. Oops. So what are mixed nets? Mixed nets are actually alternatives to onion routed networks such as Tor that offer stronger protection. There are some similarities. So similar to onion routing, uh, mixed nets are overlay networks of nodes. They use layered encryption. Instead of using onion routing, they, use, uh, they can use something like Sphinx uh, that uh, is a packet format for nested encryption. And the messages similar to onion routing, again, are relayed through multiple nodes. And uh, the, the point of using a layered encryption system like Sphinx is that each of these uh, relays, intermediate relays, will take out one of the layers of encryption and then pass it on to the next hop. Um, in, a, in, a mix, uh, in a mixed net, uh, each of the mixed nodes uh, has two main purposes. One is to transform the appearance of, of messages. Uh, this is done through a cryptographic transformation, basically at the crypto, uh, encryption or decryption operation. And the other is to uh, transform the flow of messages uh, in the network. And this, is, this means reordering messages such as the order of inputs and outputs is not the same and is, it becomes much more difficult to correlate inputs to outputs um, in terms of timing. So if we want to think about the differences with Tor, how are mixedness different from Tor, there are two uh, key differences. So the first difference is that uh, at each of the nodes, there is actually mixing of packets. This means that uh, when packets arrive, they are not forwarded on as soon as possible, as it's the case in uh, onion routing, but rather they are kept for a variable random amount of time, such that uh, when you are looking at inputs and outputs, it's not possible to correlate inputs to outputs based on the, on the arrival and departure time. Okay? Of course, uh, this uh, achieves uh, anonymity, privacy at the network layer at the cost of latency. You, we are increasing latency here in order to have better privacy protection. The other uh, key difference is that uh, Tor is circuit based. So in Tor, you basically first set up a circuit through uh, multiple intermediaries, and then you will be sending data back and forth in an interactive channel um, uh, through these intermediaries. In mixed nets, uh, mixed nets are message based. That means that each message has its own independent uh, routing information uh, embedded in it. Uh, and that means that even if you're communicating uh, with a receiver and you're sending multiple messages to that receiver, you will not be using the same circuit through the network. You will actually, each of the packets will go through a different route, right? So uh, this is a, a also a key difference because that uh, basically uh, at the cost of having more processing power, because now you have to do uh, more uh, costly operations per packet compared to Tor that only, only has symmetric crypto once you have uh, established the, the circuit, now you actually achieve a linkability between packets within a flow. So it is not possible anymore to trivially know that two packets belong to the same sender and receiver and are part of the same, the same flow of traffic. And also between flows in the sense that in, in Tor, if you're using a, a circuit and you have an exit node and you're using that uh, circuit for different, um, co connecting to different peers or to conduct different transactions, everything becomes linkable because uh, anything that is used within the same circuit is obviously uh, coming from the same user. Um, this means that the threat model is actually different in Mixnets and in Tor. Uh, in mixed nets, the mixed nets are designed to resist what is called global network adversaries. So even if the adversary is able to see all of the links in the network, it should not be able to. It should not be possible to uh, to trace packets and link sent messages to receive messages. While Tor is designed for towards local adversaries that only see like either the sender side of the network and the receiver side, and if the adversary is able to see both ends then Tor doesn't, doesn't provide protection because you can do this uh, timing correlations, correlations between uh, start of the flow, end of the flow, number of packets in the flow, burst uh, features, and so on. There's actually a lot of uh, fine-grained information in, this, in these traffic flows, and the fact that they are linkable uh, makes them very rich. Okay, uh, so, so how can Mixnets uh, help protect uh, crypto transactions? Uh, so what Mixnets provide you with is a linkability between senders and receivers of messages. So that means that a network adversary that is looking at the traffic in the network is no longer able to figure out who is connecting to whom, who's sending messages to whom. And if you have, uh, if you're using a Mixnet that is not only used for, uh, for anonymizing the crypto transactions of a given network, such as, for example, Bitcoin, 
then it is not even possible to know whether somebody is even connecting to Bitcoin because maybe they are using the network to do something else, to send messages uh, in a chat to a friend or to visit a, a site or to do some other operation. So this is one of the properties. The other is to shield the network addresses of participants from each other so that the, you are able to have them communicate with each other without necessarily exposing their, their network addresses. And then because uh, the flows of traffic are disrupted with the, all this uh, mixing, it destroys timing correlation so that all these attacks that are based on, uh, on exploiting uh, network timing information become uh, infeasible. Okay. So in NIM, we're building a, a mixed net. And uh, just to give you a sense of the, of the technical characteristics of our mixed net, uh, we're using Poisson mixes. Poisson mixes are uh, very different from Chalmian mixes, which you might be more familiar with. In Poisson mixes, each message is delayed uh, a random amount of time. This random amount of time is chosen by the sender of the message. And that means that these mixes have actually tunable latency. So if you have, for example, multiple applications that are using the same mixnet, but that have different end-to-end uh, -end, uh, latency requirements, you're able to have tunable latency for the packets that, uh, of these applications so that um, uh, you still are able to, yeah, to meet end-to-end -end latency requirements while still having anonymity. We're using a layer topology. This is uh, basically because it's proven optimal. It's uh, very simple to analyze and it's very efficient and it scales really well. Um, we are using loops of covered traffic. So this provides uh, protection even when you have uh, low traffic uh, in the system by providing some sort of uh, baseline of traffic uh, that uh, provides protection for everyone by concealing uh, when messages are being sent and by providing good anonymity sets for all, uh, to all the messages as they traverse uh, nodes. Um, the NIM mixnet is based on Sphinx, uh, and we use the single-use reply blocks or SERPs uh, that Sphinx provides to provide reliable transport. So that means that uh, when you send a packet through this mixnet, uh, uh, because you because of the of the tunable latency and the Poisson mixing that is basically defines the latency, the, the sender is what the one defining the latency. It becomes possible to predict when the message will be delivered to the endpoint and therefore it becomes possible to predict when um, an acknowledgement should be received. So that enables us to, to provide reliable transport. And also anonymous replies because these serves um, are basically uh, is headers that you can provide to somebody so that they can send you a packet back without knowing your network address. We also have some gateways that are, um, uh, their function is to be able to provide a kind of a Dropbox for clients so that even if they are offline, uh, they can still receive the messages. This is important and it's in contrast to Tor, where the connections are interactive, bi-directional. Uh, you establish the circuits, it's live for a while, you uh, shuffle packets back and forth and then you kill it. In Mixnet, you really send a message into the network and then it kind of uh, gets routed until it gets delivered. So it might be that the, your destination is not online at the time, so you need to have some solution for that. Um, more details uh, about the NIM Mixnet is an incentivized Mixnet. This is in contrast with uh, I2P or with Tor. Um, that it, we think that this enables the, the mixnet to scale up as uh, it would be possible for operators of mixed nodes to be rewarded for the work and resources that they provide to the network. Now, um, of course, if you want to distribute rewards uh, to, to the different nodes for the work that they do, then you need to be able to somehow measure this work, this work that they do. And this is actually quite a hard problem in, uh, in uh, private, in anonymous routing systems. And we are developing a, 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 a mechanism um, to measure quality of service provided by nodes, meaning that we, we check that the nodes are really uh, routing all of the packets that they are receiving and not dropping these packets. And this is done uh, via measurement messages that act as a randomized sampling over the network and that are revealed at the end, providing public verifiability so that all participants in the network can check who is providing good quality of service and who is not providing good quality of service. And therefore everybody can agree on who should be rewarded, how much. Um, we also have, uh, the system is more complex than just a mixnet. Uh, we also have uh, validators 
that maintain a blockchain with the network-wide information. So this prevents eclipse attacks and all the attacks that are based on, on giving people different views on the network. Um, it also makes sure that we have a consistent global view. And uh, the system is also integrated with private credentials, which is a whole other piece I don't have the time to talk about, but that enables basically to combine network privacy with private authentication. Um, we have a testnet available already. It currently has uh, more, than more than 250 nodes. We estimate that the current bandwidth might be in the neighborhood of 200 megabit per second, and that's probably a conservative estimate. Uh, we already have a SOX5 proxy uh, for tunneling client traffic and is uh, enabled to work with Electrum and Blockstream Green and Keybase Chat, and we would probably be adding other uh, wallets and applications soon. Uh, so it's already usable for test purposes. You can, you know, you can install it and you can tunnel your, your traffic uh, to, um, to the mixed net. Uh, I want to point out that given the bandwidth that is already offered, even in the test phase, uh, this would be enough to, to basically route all the cryptocurrency traffic that exists currently in the world. So it's, it's uh, pretty powerful in that respect. Uh, you want to see a demo, uh, the YouTube video um, that I link there, you can see a demo on how this performs when downloading a video uh, via the MixNet. And we can see that, you know, it's pretty good quality even for high resolution videos, which is really nice. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we are, if you would like to run a node, please uh, check our webpage and uh, our docs. And uh, you are very welcome to join the network and, uh, and run, of one, run one of the nodes. We also have a Telegram channel and um, um, Twitter and so on, if you want to join the community and ask questions. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have, and there is time for it. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.